I brought these two out because no one cares about them. We're going to bring out the next two. This next one, she's very, very popular in all kinds of cartoons. She did the voice of Vicky the Babysitter, Greg Delisle. Bring her on out. Hi, Gray. Gray's actually on time for this today, which is exciting for all of us. I'm trying to stand, but I'm, I'm tethered to the table. Okay. He had never watched it either. He never watched the series. So it was funny because he's like, we got to have you come over for the episode when Azula first makes her appearance. So, they were, so he was filming himself watching it. And it was funny because I was sitting just out of frame of the camera. So when Azula gets like taken in on the rickshaw, I was just like, whatever, bitches. Like, I just kind of like, I can't the camera. You can look that up online. Um, <laughs> <laughs> hey, you're good. You tell him. You're like, hey, you so much He wasn't going to say it, but he was like. Yeah. Okay. I had one more. <laughs> um, so my third question is uh, about the, the young ones TV show. Uh, I wrote has surprised me a little bit. I always knew that Iroh was a very well-written character, and it was, that the words were beautiful. But it wasn't until I started coming to these cons when I realized this character had an impact. I don't have this. You don't. <laughs> Special treat with you. I am here with the one and only Jesse Flower, best known as Top Bayfall from Avatar The Last Airbender. How you doing? I'm doing great. Wow, what an intro. I need energy from you. I need a cup of you every morning when I wake up. <laughs> well, I got coffee. <laughs> There it is. <laughs> um, good luck, man, on your YouTube journey. Mm -hmm. Sounds like you're already off to a good start. 11,000 strong, man. You're killing the game. Well, no shit. App display. Is that cactus juice? Yes. <laughs> It'll quench you. Nothing. <laughs> no. It's not quench you. That's so cool. And this wall art is amazing, man. Oh, no. This is a blanket. It's a blanket. Very yeah. cool. Yeah. Compliments a box lunch. <laughs> Oh, nice. I have a, here we go. Here we go. Here's some box lunch. Boom. I got the awesome. jersey. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Nice. Hey, Gray, how are you? That's great. Oh, I see you're a waterbender. Ugh. Well. Oh, you got, oh, you got your fire. I'm sorry. I saw water behind you and I was like, well, yes, I, appro I approve of you now that you're, I can see your Fire Nation shirt. I was about to banish you, Steven. But I have an Azula Funko too. <laughs> oh, wonderful. Oh my goodness. I love it. Are oh, you gonna yes, get it? Just... Oh, what was that, Greg? Are you gonna get it signed? Well, by you in person as soon as COVID's over. Oh, how fun. Oh, that'll be great. I can't wait to give you a big hug when all this is done. Oh, recorders, look who I'm with. Hey there, Twinkle Toes. <laughs> oh my god. Thank you, Jesse. <laughs> of course. <laughs> then there was a uh... Uh, a kind of a rebootish kind of a uh, show, oh, wow. and now there's another live action coming out. Um, so let's talk. About I don't know the words. Man. This is your song. I sing country music today. at karaoke. <laughs> Powerhouse Comic Con, their fifth anniversary, and it's re oh. it's recording time. <laughs> uh, Jesse, that's my catchphrase. Like, how would you feel if I said yours? I mean, go for it. Keep your knees high, Twinkle Toes. Table and I was sitting here, and someone came up and he was like, Why don't you 
Azula on Avatar? And I, I, I had barely any pictures. I just had like a headshot. I didn't even have like characters. This was before this was as popular as it is. Yeah. And I was like, oh yeah, yeah, I was. I was. I think so. You know. And he was like, and he was like, well, hold on a second. He went on his phone. And he's like, yeah, it was you. And he's like, hold on a second. And he just brought all these people over. And I'm like, I cannot believe people are buying my autograph. This is, this is crazy. You know. So anyway, yeah. Then there was a big line, and I was like, I love conventions. <laughs> Of all the characters you've played, what set of powers would you like and why? <laughs> Say that one more time. Say that one more time. Of all the characters you've played, including voice, which powers would you like and why? I mean, would Jake end with Zuka Fire? Is I can sing the entire score, and in fact, I'll sing it for you now. I hope you guys have an hour or so because here we go. <laughs> the pond, the floating. No. Uh, anyway, I would like you to do with albums, I would sing with this album. Oh. Cool with all the Power Rangers, definitely secretly wish I was part of that uh, that fraternity. A lot of friends that are Power Rangers, including Walter Jones, and, uh, and rest in peace, JDF, of course, a longtime homie. And um, yeah, so the, the Rangers lost one, but you know, rest in peace, JDF. Yeah, thank you for that. We have infiltrated <laughs> the normal people. We are the normal now. Tell you, nerds.
I'm, uh, I'm Greg Baldwin, and I do an impression of Mako Iwamatsu. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, everybody, I'm Cricket Lee. I play May, and I just want to say, Zuko, don't ever break up with me again. Yeah. <laughs> Anymore. <laughs> I'm Jenny Kwan, and I play your favorite Kyushu warrior, <laughs> Suki. I'm Jack DeSena. I was in a mac and cheese commercial when I was 14. <laughs> it was for Easy Mac. <laughs> Thank you. And then I was also the voice of Sokka. <laughs> same time in so long, so it's like, was ever, ever. Oh, so was ever? <laughs> Who, who's never met each other before? Well, yeah. well no one's met Zach. He's the avatar. You can't find that guy. He's from New York. He's from the other side of the country. So. Yeah, right. Let it go. Yeah, no, I mean, we've met, we've met virtually. Some of you were talking to me earlier about, you know, saw our super unions, but being here for the first time together, it's, it's amazing. Yeah. Nice to finally meet you. Like, you. you were the si like the size of my eight-year-old son, I think. I mean, like. I was probably thirteen, but I was the size of my eight-year-old son. <laughs> yeah, the first time a lot of us met you for the last episode, or technically the last two, they had a screening uh, at Paramount Studios, which was really cool, and so we got to go and watch it together. And that was the first time a lot of us met the Avatar because he flew in, and I was like, "Oh, look, there you are, Twinkle Toes." <laughs> <laughs> yeah, finally showed up. Yeah, so. Uh, Crazy because I I hadn't seen him. I did run into you a little bit in New York. Yeah, yeah, yeah that's, that's yeah. the first time I ever met you. But yeah. like, yeah. not in this October. capacity, so it's so cool. Here we are. I know. That's it. Figuring out our late twenties. You guys disappointed. So my early sixties. Process. Avatar has become a universally acclaimed animated series and cultural cultural phenomenon. As we approach the 20th anniversary. What? <laughs> Let that settle in. Um, Isn't that like three years old? Yeah. It is. Yeah. Approach. I mean, approach. <laughs> She's like, you better slow down. <laughs> don't do that to me. I don't like that. But how do you feel about the show now versus when it first aired in 2005? There's years for you. <laughs> I mean, it's, it's only got better, right? Like, come on. Like, I, I, I think that, like, growing up with the show and just having seen it multiple times now, you, you learn something new every time you watch it. Um, so I think that, you know, it just keeps getting better. You keep learning more lessons, seeing more things, and understanding things that you didn't. Um, I don't know. One thing. <laughs> Do you stay? Uh, you know, it's great. I think it's a phenomenal kind of show. It's one of those things that, it's never kind of happened. Like we didn't have Netflix before, before yeah, so yeah. a show that we did like 15 years never came back on like a new platform, which became TV for all of us worldwide and became the number one show on TV. During like, a worldwide pandemic. During a worldwide <laughs> pandemic. Like, none of this stuff has ever happened. We're like, this is crazy. But that just kind of reinvoked the audience that grew up with it, and then it found a brand new audience of younger people and older people, and it was just this poignant tale that happened to like really speak to the things going on in the world today is yeah. it's, it's phenomenal so it did like you said it got it got better as it aged like my wife <laughs> <laughs> like mason I was <laughs> well i feel like there's a, a happy little transition that happened with a lot of people that i meet where they watched it when they were younger or when they were in high school and then there was like a little break 
And then for some reason they came back to it, probably when it went on Netflix. It's like, oh yeah, I used to love this show. And then you realize that you still love this show and that it's not just a kid's show. And I feel like that's what like locked it in. You're like, wait, this is still really good. And it's been like 12 years. What's happening? I have to show this to my nieces yeah. and nephews. I must show this to my children. Yeah. And now here we are. You see yeah. it on a whole different level now. You know, like you, you watch it now and go, oh, wow, that went right over my head when I was nine. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I don't think we knew it was this cool when it first came out. Just like, no. No. Yeah. We're so much cooler now. Yeah. <laughs> oh, back row, you're not going to hide from me. Yeah, I didn't hear the question, but I Jack. was waiting to Jack. I was like waiting to call in for tickets for my favorite band, and I was missing when the radio station was calling for it, but luckily the Easy Mac cooked so quickly in the microwave that I was able to like, get the tickets and finish my Easy Mac as well. It was a We didn't know what a phenomenon it would be. Like, we just had no idea. And honestly, still, I, other voice actors go, wait, you do these conventions every weekend. I'm like, yeah, they're like, I want to do those. And I was like, yeah. yeah. I was like, it's just that we're on this certain show, and it just has this magic to it. And there's really only, like, you know, 15 of us or whatever that can really do it as much as we can. I mean, I don't know if there's yeah. another show that's, like, had such a big impact. I don't it know. It is genuinely incredible to come to these cons and just, like, talk to people who have been connecting with the show for almost 20 years now. Um, and, and see uh, generational, like families, who somebody introduced somebody else across generations, and, and it means so much to people, and it uh, means so much to us to have been a part of it, so it's beautiful to get to connect in these places. And is there a mac and cheese con? <laughs> <laughs> My rate at those is really high, so. <laughs> Sharing Easy Mac with a fascinating stranger. <laughs> did a terrible job promoting the show. I mean, everybody's watched it because so, so many times, like, couples come up and go, I said, we were dating, that he had to watch Avatar first, and then I would see, like, how things went. <laughs> or families that were like, we hated each other, and then we just started watching this show, and it bonded us so much, you know? It just all these magical, amazing stories. Yeah, nothing to do with Nickelodeon for oh. <laughs> but I don't know if said Nickelodeon because I love you, That's Nickelodeon. Right. <laughs> so much Nickelodeon for my life and my house and my car. <laughs> so audience, at this time, if you have a question, now would be the time to stand up and move to the wall. Wall. The wall of Austin say. <laughs> Well, that's the one. I think you answered it. Um, here are some of the most beloved characters. If you could have a pet from the show. Counterpoint, saber tooth moose lion cub? <laughs> there we go. Which one would you choose to be your pet? Only one. Pet lion turtle. My house is big enough. I mean, it's Appa, right? Yeah. Appa, obviously. Yeah. Don't have yeah. the sweetest. Most sensitive, kindest little cutie, and you can pet him and jump on him and ride around in the sky? Give me a break. He literally carries the show up his back. Literally. Momo's cool. Special shout out to Momo. Also, shout out to Dee Bradley Baker, who is this guy. Every single weird animal that they would toss at him, and they would be like, "Okay, we're thinking it's like a bison, but it's like a giraffe, but it's also like a seal, but it's like." And he's like, "Okay, okay, yeah." And he'd be like, "He'd be like a North American water buffalo." Or he'd be like, like he like knew it was one of the craziest things I've ever seen. The guy has like endless talent, and he's also really nice. So I'm like, choose a lane. You know? <laughs> Where's he? he should be here. He should be. Here. I know. He's shooting an easy match commercial. Oh. <laughs> Mr. Sorry, Jack. <laughs> I, I do also love the um the, the, the otter penguins, the, oh, yeah. the double fins. I don't know, penguins are penguins and horses are my favorite, so I'm kinda of torn between that and the turtle duck. Yeah. 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 You can always put a turtle duck in your purse and carry it with you. <laughs> 
not getting away from you, Missoula. I know you want to. Oh, no, I agree with Appa, because even though that horrible beast in the show, I would do the plus of hand. But, um, but no, it would be so great to do cons every week because we fly. I mean, I, uh, I get on a plane every Thursday night and go do these. And, and it's fun that when I get there and you're meeting everybody and have fun with that, but the flight's a little. Um, but if I could just sleep on a beautiful, fluffy chimney. Yeah. So comfortable. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Background. Appa? Appa. Yeah. What about those weird armadillo things? Yeah. <laughs> I don't know the name of it. So, uh, There's some weird. What is it called? Somebody here helps us. Uh, Komodo Ryan? Ooh. Sure. Yep. Oh, uh, really? Uh, the uh, yeah. Yes. But then, no, the girl, what's her name? Shirshu. 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 Oh, it was yeah. all yeah. 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 The Shirshu. Oh, yeah. 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 The Shirshu. I know the Shirshu. I do the podcast break me elements and I know a lot about Avatar. Yeah. <laughs> okay, at least get, I think it's a C on the test now. <laughs> I, I had not, well, I, I started watching it now with my eight-year-old son because that was, like, I have three kids and they all like to do different special things with mommy each week. My own mother thought I was a monster. She was right, of course, but it's still her, so I'm trying to think. <laughs> but, um, so, you know, my older one's 16, so he wants to do all, like, adult type stuff. And then my, you know, my, I have a six-year-old daughter, she wants to get pedicure. And my, but my eight-year-old's like, I want to watch Avatar. And I was like, okay, he's like, my friends say that you're mean on it. <laughs> Okay, so we've started watching it together. We just snuggle every Wednesday night. We snuggle and we watch the show. And um, so I'm learning all these things that I didn't You catch. should listen to the podcast. I don't know. Well, every time I do Braving the Elements, I'm going to be so... Janet's going to be blown away by my knowledge of the show now. Because usually she's like, Ray, do you remember? Okay. Well, I'm going to send you a synopsis of like what happened. I'm like, okay. And for the longest time I did, you know, during the pandemic when the show took off, I had done, you know, the app cameo, like every now and again, like once a week. I'm like, oh, a cameo, that's nice. And then one day it was like, you have 56 cameos. And I'm like, what? You know, because I didn't know, I didn't know the show had started airing again. And I was like, what has happened? Something happened. You know, <laughs> anyway, but, um, but I was saying Eero, Uncle Eero, because I didn't, hadn't watched the show. Uncle Eero? <laughs> Crazy needs to go down. <laughs> now I'm very well versed on my stupid uncle who's a quitter and a loser. <laughs> Final question. Favorite voice line? That's a sharp outfit, Chan. Sharp enough to capture the hull of an Empire class Fire Nation battleship, leaving thousands to drown at sea because it's so sharp. <laughs> That's rough, buddy. <laughs> Why am I so bad at being good? <laughs> God, it's hard to say. I like to do the entire opening monologue yeah. to myself. Yeah. 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 I do like to say, my grandmother used to tell me stories. I like that part. And I also like, of course, that I believe Aang can save the world. <laughs> Actually from Cora, uh, but this is the line that got me through COVID, the line that personally helped me. Uh, if you look for the light, you will often find it. If you look for the dark, that is all you will ever see. Oh <laughs> Similarly, the line that kind of helped me get through COVID in a similar way is, um, drink cactus juice. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing's quenchier. It's the quenchiest. <laughs> Cactus juice can be a comfort in dark times. <laughs> I, I was gonna say, May, that your voice is very soothing. Like anytime I hear the intro, sometimes I do just play the intro, and I'm just like, God, this is just so nice to listen to. I mean, you're annoying. I'm gonna call like, you and start leaving you messages. <laughs> just like, so. hello. I believe you can sing. <laughs> <laughs> well, I believe you can't. <laughs> keep me, keep me grounded. Um, I need it. My, my favorite one is actually one of Toph's like first line jokes when they're when they're in the episode of the library. I think my favorite episode is that but that and Tales of Bossing say torn between which one is my favorite. But she's like, look, there it is. That's what it'll sound like when one of you spots it. <laughs> I was gonna say my well, my favorite line is that's rough, buddy. <laughs> Took it, but my favorite line I do say, so of course, but Dante has to yeah, say it. Yeah, Dante has to say it. Say it, Dante. Okay. Uh, my first girlfriend okay. turned into the moon. That's <laughs> rough, buddy. <laughs> so my favorite main line is the, you miscalculated. 
I love Zuko more than I fear you. <laughs> I want to use that one day. I don't know how, but I'm going to use that someday. <laughs> it's a great breakup word. <laughs> as long as you love Zuko. That's <laughs> right. someone for Zuko. <laughs> Ty Lee, Ty Lee. I did, I said that's rough, but I guess maybe oh, not. What about Ty Lee one? Oh, Ty Lee, I, I should have. Circus Freak is a compliment. Woo! <laughs> You would think it would be the traditional one, but mine is, you never told me you made out with a moon spirit. <laughs> that is rough, buddy. Sorry. <laughs> All right, so, yeah. Now we'll take some audience questions. Hi. 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 So my name's Randy. I just got out nervous, so I spied a second ago. Um, <laughs> there are so many amazing episodes from this series and a few that I will live in my brain forever. Uh, the Puppet Master terrified me as a kid. And it was one of those that I would watch up until the end because the whole bloodbending scene just yes. freaked me out. Are there any episodes throughout um, the series that have resonated with you in a positive or just like an emotional way? I have to say that is all, that one also really freaked me out. I think like being, it was just so dark. And I think it was dark in a way that was like really interesting because the idea of having the power of manipulation and control and um, forcing someone else to kind of bend to your will in this way, I think like those themes are really heavy and intense. And obviously I was just scared because that lady was scary and the whole thing was scary. But um, I think it was really like, it was a meaningful like lesson even for me at the time of like understanding you know, the darkness of trying to control other people through manipulation and stuff like that. So I think that one, for sure, is, like, my favorite episode. Oh. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Damn, why she bossed it? You're not. The Storm. Actually, The Storm. I love The Storm. I was watching The Storm again, because I love the Zuko and how they kind of did Zuko and Aang. Like, they just balanced the, the episode, and it just kind of, like, taught me that Especially at that time of the story, you think that the villain, you know, he's the villain, and that's the hero. But then you realize, you're like watching, you're like, oh, the so-called villains in our life and the heroes are not that different. Like, they're actually mirroring. It's like, they're, they're seeing that's a very strange thing. So it kind of gave me like, wow, I have to really think about who I think are the villains in my life are and who are the heroes because you can go out there. Like, oh, except for Zula. It's very I always, uh, I always liked the Guru episodes and that the way the direction the series kind of took there. Um, I think there are a lot of things that the series covers that aren't typically touched upon in what's meant to be a kid's show, but I think just like introducing kids and myself at the time to like the concepts of spirituality and all of those things, that was very cool and it's, it's, it's something to, to remember. I just, um, the, the one about the, like, the hot guys in the trees and then Kachara, like, I can't remember what his name is, but she, yes, 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 sorry, sorry. I thought you'd be better next time you're on the podcast. Yes, I'm better. <laughs> <laughs> Can't even have to blow your mind. The hot guys in the tree? <laughs> You knew. You immediately oh, knew. <laughs> Everyone felt that little feeling. Anyway, <laughs> but but you know just about how Katara believed in him over her family and how I, I always tell people if your family doesn't like the person you're dating, examine that. Unless your family's just really evil, but like my my, my family, like if I, those I didn't like someone, like you know it would be okay. Um, but but no, but I always say like your family loves you more than anything. They all they want is for you to be happy and be the best you that you can be. So if you're dating someone, your family's like. You know, I mean, obviously there's there's something they're seeing that you're not seeing. <laughs> just look it over again. Anyway, that just really resonated with me. And I was like, I should have listened to my family. Sound like anyway. a mother. <laughs> I know, true. I'm always telling my kids, don't be with someone who's going to take you away from your mother. <laughs> I so many girls are just like uh, jealous of their <laughs> so many girls are jealous of their, their like son's girlfriend or whatever. Their brain. And it's like, he's not going to marry his mom. You're relaxed. You're set. You got it. You, 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 there's no danger there. I'm going to make sure that whoever I'm dating, I run through gray. <laughs> um, I mentioned the library. I think the library is my favorite. I do love Tales of Bossy Say, but I loved reading growing up, which is 
funny. Um, <laughs> so I, I just thought that that whole library was gorgeous. The owl, terrifying, but gorgeous. And just how, like, I don't know, a plethora of knowledge can be overwhelming and beautiful, but also terribly violent. So, you know. Cool. Awesome. I, think, I think my favorite, one of my favorite moments that resonated with me, and usually I, when I listen to myself, I think, oh, I suck. How did I ever get this job? But in this particular scene, I thought the scene where Zuko goes into the tent, and, and Iroh says, I was never angry with you. I was sad because I thought you had lost your way. That is another example of the lessons this show is teaching. I mean, this show was dealing with genocide from the very first episode. The least from the vine sequence, which resonates with people, it's not really even about death. It's about grief, which is a much more complicated process. And I think that's, in many ways, the power of the show today and why we're still talking about it all these years later. I also had a favorite scene where Zuko goes into a tent, but... <laughs> I still have one minute. with him, right? The yeah. three of us. Oftentimes it was me and Jack and Dante in the room, um, which was really funny. <laughs> uh, yeah, wild, wild times. Um, but I remember that we worked with Mark Hamill, and I remember my favorite thing that he said was, like, at one point he was, like, doing something, and then he stopped himself, and he was like, God, I'm like a parody of myself. <laughs> so funny, and I've never forgotten him in my entire life. So, yes. <laughs> Oh, sorry. I, I've <laughs> Mark. I've been. It's so funny. I never really watched Star Wars, and so I've been working with Mark since I was like, you know, 20, 20 years old. And then to me, he's always just he's Mark, you know. But I mean, after I watched Star Wars, I was like, oh yeah, he's like an icon. Anyway, but it was funny because every time he was at the studio, there was like all these board artists and like all these people in the, the thing, and I'm like, what's going on? Like, why are all these people in here? And then I was like, oh, Mark's recording today. So everybody's found a reason to sort of meander their way into the phone calls. <laughs> to make sure that anyway it was always very funny but my son met him when he was little and then he, he hadn't watched star wars either and so he was like is that guy's name mark and i was like yeah and he's like is he like famous or something he seems like really familiar i was like yeah he's pretty yeah anyway. <laughs> thank you and we'll try to like rapid fire since yeah, there's such a yeah, line so see if i can get through this um this is specifically for for Greg. Um, I think the character of Iroh probably means a lot to a lot of people in this room. Um, <laughs> not here with us, but a lot of that, I think people overlook you a lot. And that scene in particular, like you mentioned, is like my favorite scene as well. Was there a, did you have a lot of um, nervousness taking on that role after what not? Did you know what how iconic it was. Absolutely. I mean, I, I discovered, and the way I ended up with a gig, and if you've heard the story, you know, you're going to have to hear it again. I'm sorry. <laughs> uh, it's such a, uh, Iroh says, you know, destiny is a funny thing. I am sitting here today because of a birthday present that I got on my 17th birthday. Uh, I was a fond, uh, big Stephen Sondheim fan. I was a young actor. Wanted, my parents would give me musical albums for my birthday. In 1977, I got an album called Pacific Overtures, which starred an actor named Mako Awamatsu. And man, I loved I loved this musical so much, I could sing the entire score for you now. In fact, I will, so sit back. Upon the floating kingdom. But uh, I digress. Anyway, what I didn't know by singing along with this musical again and again and again was that I was actually working on an impression of Mako Awamatsu, which would come in handy in 2006. So literally, it, it ended up being, I now have it framed. And the cool thing is, I was a, in 1981, I was a room service waiter in Houston, Texas. They were doing a production of Sweeney Todd across the street. Hal Prince and Stephen Sondheim were staying in the hotel. So not only is this the album that ultimately got me this gig, it is indeed signed by Stephen Sondheim wow. and Hal Prince. So, yeah. I was well aware of, of this work long before I was at the Cyro. So, yeah, I was terrified and still am, frankly. <laughs> Hi, I'm Koo. Nice to meet you guys. Okay. Ray and Dante. You guys, the best uncle 
and nephew relation because I have the same problem. Uh, I want to thank you guys. It's not even a question. To raising a literal generation yes. of amazing So thank you guys very much for making us who we are because of all you guys. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you all more than welcome. I have, a, I have a three year old. That's right. Uh, a she, the trailer for a different show I'm on, Dragon Prince. <laughs> Auto played one time where we were pulling up something for her on Netflix and it starts with my voice and she no. freaked out. <laughs> she was just like, what's happening? We're like, does that sound nice? Um, so that's. The full extent of any yeah, <laughs> stuff that she's consumed, I'll let you know. And she I'll gets let older. You know. Yeah, exactly. Well, I have two step kids, and 15 and 17, and so the 17 year old has nothing in common with me, nor wants to do anything with me. But, uh, but his, uh, but his friends at school, uh, they're like, "What, dude? Your mom? No way!" And so, like, I'm like, "Hi, guys!" All like cheesy, you know. Uh, psycho mom, and they're like, is that her? And I'm like, and they're, and I'm like, yeah. So he'll come home and be like, can you sign this for them? <laughs> I mean, at least I can have some kind of cool cred. Like, I'll take it. So, but they love it. They've seen it through and through. And they love it. My my son was I was pregnant. He's 16 now, but I was pregnant with him when I was Azula. So he I would feel him jump when I was like yelling and stuff like inside. He was like, oh good. He was scared. He, he was scared. But he's never seen the show, but he's, you know, he said at high school he was getting bullied a little bit because they were like, your mom's, you know, like, you know, and he was like, oh, you were like some mean, like, character, I don't know, and I was like, oh, yeah, I was scared of Azula, and, yeah, but now his brother, so we haven't gotten to the Azula part for the eight-year-old yet, so he, he still thinks I'm, he's about, I'm about to pull some rank around him. <laughs> Bedtime, I said, peasants. <laughs> I think, I think it was last Christmas, I was talking to my son, who's now 28, I think. And I said, I said, you know, Cooper, uh, uh, you know, I, I rose a very famous father figure. I'm your father. How, how did I rank, you know? And my son says to me, yeah, give me a solid six and a half. <laughs> Kids. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Congratulations. little pie <laughs> Guys, my name is Aaron. Big fan. Love you all for what you do. Uh, I've heard a rumor that they are making a live-action remake of Avatar: The Last Airbender. I don't know if this is true or not, but I don't think this remake would be complete if all of you cameoed as yourselves as the Ember Island players. <laughs> This is the funniest thing of all time when I try to do this because I always enter into it being like, I know, of course I know this. And then I like pull a Dante, which is like, Dante used to do this thing when we were recording where like he would get so worked up that he would start to like not be able to get anything like it. And I get, because like, where, where, what's going? Where am I? Where am I? Where am I? Like, it's okay. You're here. It's okay. But that's kind of like me. It's like, I'm like, Okay, some, I'm sure somebody else knows how it starts here. It's like, um, um, okay, so, so start, 
Start? Yeah, just say the all first together. one. Yeah, all together. Let's do it. Ready? Three, two, one. and like some hot guys and trees. No, <laughs> Fire Nation maybe, but not the hot guys and trees. Um, and, then, and then, so we were like, okay, you know what? We're gonna get this kid into shape because I believe Aang can save the world. <laughs> thank you, thank you. Thank you. I think that was right. That was better than the original. Yeah. <laughs> So, uh, first off, uh, Dante, I just wanted to like, say that uh, I actually recently watched a fantastic Filipino Brothers, or fabulous Filipino Brothers on Hulu the other day, so congratulations to you for Thank you so much. Um, if you guys were to, if you, if you guys were, had, if, by whatever possibility, if you were able to meet, interact with the characters that you guys played, what would you do with them? I would go have tea, we'll go higher. Yeah, way. that's what I was like. I'm gonna go out on a here and say have tea. Yeah. We'd have tea together. We can, do that so we can do that now. Or maybe tea. <laughs> Kayla! <laughs> you said the characters that we voice, like if I hung out with Toph. Yes. Right. Okay. Um, I feel like we should go to therapy. <laughs> and then uh, and then, you know, maybe maybe try to go make some friends and realize that you do actually need friends or can't do it all alone. Oh. I'd go swimming with Katara. I think that'd be so chic. We'd be tossing each other <laughs> 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 I would disappear for another hundred years. <laughs> um, I mean, I could fly. That's pretty awesome. But also penguin sledding. Let's go with that. Yeah. I play volleyball because <laughs> the skulls of our enemies. <laughs> yeah, if I could hang out with my favorite character I'd ever played, I guess we would have some easy men. <laughs> I feel, like, I feel like we would do karaoke and sing love songs about make out forever. <laughs> I would ride the Unagi with Suki. <laughs> no, but really, we would just lie on the beach and check out boys. <laughs> Thank you so much for being here, like all in one room. That's like, I don't think anybody ever expected this to happen in a while, so thank you. Uh, my name's Alina, and I guess my question is, is like, so it kind of touches up on like the last episode and the first episode of Korra, right? Like, what happened to Zuko's mom? So I know they wrote something about it, but before you knew any of that, what were your guys' interpretations of what would have happened to Zuko's mom? I had no idea. I, I really wanted to know also. I liked what they wrote in the search. Very cool. But yeah, it's something I always thought like, ah, you know, it's like a, a lot of these other really adult themes that they do right. in the show. One of the themes is uh, abuse, parental abuse, neglect. Oh and you're like, this is really intense. And you get to see not just with Zuko, but with Azula, two things that can happen with parental abuse. Like there's the kids go in different directions. And so I did not know what where the mother was. And when I, when I read it in the the, the comics, it was I really did love it, and she got to tell her story of what happened, which is still kind of messed up. Yeah. <laughs> still kind of like, I'm like, that's still messed up. You still abandoned your children. <laughs> but I get that you had to grab no life. But still, right. one of your daughters is in trouble. <laughs> Not pregnant, but you know. Not pregnant. Not in trouble. So I, I didn't really know. I'm like, this is the kind of story that I try not to set and guess what, what they're going to do. I kind of like wait to see. 
where their mind's taken. In the search, did you think she, what did she do in the search? I don't know, did she leave because yeah, it was abusive? You have to read it, you have to read it. <laughs> <laughs> Can't tell you, Azula, you have to find out your mom's story yourself. <laughs> That would be a solid podcast episode. <laughs> and you should leave it. Mother's Day. <laughs> Hi, everyone. Hi. Hi. I'm so glad that you guys are together. My name is Gray, number two. Oh. <laughs> is it an E or an A? People always ask me. E-I. E-I. Oh, E-I. Oh, I love it. <laughs> so I currently have eight avatar tattoos. Ooh. And I was wondering what you guys would get tattooed like related to Avatar if you could. You <laughs> and actually, oh, go ahead. I get the blue spirit mask. Where? Right on your the face? Star right on my face. <laughs> blue spirit mask. Okay, I have to you already got it? Oh, it's you. Yeah. That's cool. Who's that on your back? That's who? Uh, why? <laughs> but why, Gray? But why? You flatter yourself. You were never even a player. <laughs> but beautiful art. Beautiful art. Really right? You've been around before. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I've, I've met you guys in here. I don't remember you. Yeah. I feel like I would get an animal. I mean, my name is Cricket. So turtle duck. But yeah, I think I might get a turtle duck. Yeah. I've been influenced by this one because he's been talking about this tattoo. We're doing it next happening. week in Atlanta. Next week. <laughs> and I would do, I'm, I don't know, a little artsy. So I would probably do like a minimal kind of outline of like a vaginal spine with like a little like cute dots. I don't know, something cute like that you don't really know it's a vaginal, but if you know, you know, you know? Yeah. I'd get the entirety of Sokka's really horrible drawing. I've seen those yin yang fish. I don't know what they're called. Yeah, they're nice. Yeah, that's nice because it doesn't scream avatar. Too sad for me, you couldn't do it. Like Kaiba Yeah, Kaiba Yeah, Kaiba Yeah, Kaiba Yeah, Kaiba I'm, I'm getting the full neck tat of Katara. <laughs> Maybe like two o'clock <laughs> That's just me though. Yeah, that's, that's, that's the, that's the cop-out answer. There. Thank you. Who's gonna get the teardrop? Hi, my name is Oscar. Uh, I have a question. If you could cast someone in your role, who would you cast to play with, regardless of gender? Live action That's or voice? That's a good question. Voice. Okay. Voice. I, I cast Dante. Dante. <laughs> <laughs> We're having it before any of you guys can take it. <laughs> Sorry, we made the highest offer. Yeah. You That's a good question. Who would cast yeah. I don't know. Uh, who sounds cool? <laughs> oh, thank you. Nick Cage. Nick Cage. Oh, Nick Cage is Zuko. Would be good. I love that. Interesting. Christopher Walken. I was Uncle just Iroh. gonna say that. Uncle Iroh, Christopher Walken. What? I don't know. Can we... Jack. I like... don't know. You're too smart for us. We're not that smart. I like. I don't know, like, Katara had such, like, a clear tone, and, I mean, I was 12, so I had kind of a clear tone, too, but I feel like it'd be cool to hear talk with some texture, like, 12-year-old texture, so maybe, like, a, I'm gonna say it was, like, a Florence Pugh, something that has, like, a little bit of roughness, so it could be, like, a dynamic to Katara's kind of Aquafina sweet. or something? Yeah, 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 there we go, there we go, see? This is now I'm now becoming a casting director. Now I'm a casting Now we're in the room. Now you're in the room. <laughs> I feel like Joey Ortega could clearly play men. <laughs> but uh, there's so many other people too. Right? William Shatner. <laughs> Prince Zuko, it's good to see you. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Uh, it's actually crazy. I can't believe I'm sitting or standing here. Right <laughs> That's how nervous I am. Love you guys so much. I've had. Anyway, to my question, <laughs> um, uh, it was hit on a hit like a lot uh, of how there's like a lot of adult themes and a lot of like darker things that uh, are often not in like children's programming. And I was wondering for for you guys, especially like when you were like voice acting, like getting into character. Uh, when were you like? Was there a moment or was there a line where you got so in the headspace of your character where you're just like, whoa. I, I need this, I can't. Yeah. Well, 
Well, clearly Dante, apparently. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> I mean, what? You know, I got into it for sure. You know, it's, I don't know. I think we just, when you're acting, you just kind of in it, and I don't even think of the honor, but we're just kind of, yeah, I think every day. Oh, maybe I'm confused. <laughs> Where you personally were like, whoa. Yeah. No, there was, I do remember Extra. specifically when we'd read the scripts, there, after we, it started getting into like book two, we'd come in, like, meet, meet Jack, and they're like, did you read the script this week? Like, what's going on? That's crazy. Yeah. Is this what's actually happening? We were start to, that was supposed to like that started like happening around book two. Book one, I don't think I was like I don't know what we're doing. <laughs> but you gotta understand, book one, me and May were doing Jake Long the American Dragon yeah! on Tuesday, and then on Thursday we would be doing Avatar. So we were like, and we were like weird. Is it, am I a Hunts girl? And who's the penguin side? What's the, what's happening here? Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Crazy. Thank you. What's up, Ty Lee? Hello. I'm so nervous. Um, Avatar is a show about a mini lesson, so what would you want people to take after watching the show based on your experiences with it? Uh, similar to my, my, you know, kind of joking comment about going to therapy, but, but actually, um, that, that you can't do it all alone. I think the hyper-independence, which I have experienced a lot of, uh, is actually quite isolating. So I think that it's scary, but to trust people and when they let you down, you just keep moving forward and hope that your trust will eventually find the right people, which is easier said than done. But I think a helpful lesson, especially for trust. Right. And there's something with, like, the flexibility. Like, I like the, the idea of, like, being able to be super present in the moment and so that you're flexible, you know, the like concept of like a tree, like it's gotta be able to bend or it'll break. And I think like, you know, we were thrown so many curveballs in this journey, but I think the concept of perseverance and the fact that we had each other and like, you know, like it's, it's, it really, it was such a team effort and the fact that they sort of grew together and they were able to be there for each other. That's the only thing that got them through. So like you could plan it all day and yet so much, was thrown at them that they didn't expect that, you know, they were able to sort of be with themselves enough to know what to do when it didn't go down as expected. You know? Yeah, I was thinking, um, you know, May I couldn't express herself, didn't feel she could express herself, definitely didn't meet parents' um, you know, expectations. So I think vulnerability, even though that's certainly not what she shows, um, I think that would that be what I learned, which is that it's okay, right, to lean on people, but it's okay to be vulnerable. It's okay to express yourself, and it doesn't make you weak. Yeah. And I think Zico's story says that we're all worthy of being redeemed for something. Yeah. yeah. And also, if you struggle with mental illness and you have medication available to you, don't feel bad about taking it. That is the story of a soul. Somebody, somebody could have, she could have, I hear I, I, others. You know, a lot of mental illness in my family, and there would be people who do terrible things, and people would say, like, they're sick, they, you know, they're, because a lot of times, you know, they don't like the medication they're taking because it has these weird side effects, or they're gaining weight, or they're, and I get that, you know, and so they would just decide to not take it, and, like, it was, it would rock the entire family. So, um, yeah, if you, if you have floaties available to you via medication, <laughs> don't go in the pool without your floaties. <laughs> I, think, I think if you could, I thought about this, if you could distill... Iroism, for lack of a better word, down to just a few bullet points. You know, what this basic philosophy is, and it has helped me, is first of all, savor the little things in life. A, a cup of tea, you know, a beautiful day. Secondly, everyone can become a better version of themselves. It doesn't matter who you are or what you've come from, you can be better. And most important, and it's a lesson for our times, be kind, be kind, be kind. That is it for our time. I am so sorry, but you guys can catch the entire cast downstairs. Yes, we're doing photo ops after this for a second. Uh, I think they're at three ten. I'm not sure, but uh, we probably have a decent amount. I'm assuming we'll be back at our table around yeah. four. Yeah, I'm guesstimating, just as a heads up for time wise. But before people go, can we all take a picture with them in the background? Sure. Oh, Thank you guys so much. Thank you.